Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the D3 Media Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined by Joseph Thomas. And uh, yeah, what's it been like two years since our last episode? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah, you're one of my last Skype calls on Skype. That's how long it's been since I've used it. Yeah, I, know, I noticed that when I just logged back into mine, that was also my last Skype call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, we got plenty of time now since the whole world's like going to shit. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just the way shit's going right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it could be worse. We, we, we could be Italy. Yeah, I mean, at least at least we're actually allowed to leave our, our homes. For now. Our own free, for now. Yeah. Yeah, the but, the government the they're gonna start, so. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a shit show, but hopefully things get figured out. Yeah, so I've got a uh, pretty much nothing to really talk about. That's like that I really want to bring up, except for like one thing. So it's just like I guess we could just babble. Might as well. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean we're bored, stuck. We're quarantined inside our house. Yeah, I've been home for about two weeks now since I moved back from LA. So it's I've hung out with Albert and Mike once. That was the only social interaction I've had in like two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> and we're all about ready to kill each other here at our, at my house. It's it's a uh, it's bad. Yeah. Other than that, it's just been playing video games pretty much for the first time in a long time <laughs> yeah i'm jealous i envy you i wish i had a playstation right now i really need to to get on that i actually haven't got i haven't played hardly any video games in like a long time until now because yeah. it's like what else am i gonna do it's the perfect time honestly to, to, to sit, sit back and play video games well it's the one time i can do it and not feel like i'm wasting time because it's like well i can't do anything else yeah so, yeah i feel you Take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I watched the other day is uh, I watched Blackfish for the first time. Blackfish? Yeah. Have you ever seen Blackfish? I think I've heard of it. I'm not super familiar with it, though. It's pretty much, it's a documentary that killed SeaWorld, pretty much. Oh, I see. Yeah, it says it came out in, like, 2013. Yeah. It's, like, the reason why nobody goes to SeaWorld anymore. It just shows, like, how, like screwed up they are to the to the orcas and shit and like i was sitting there watching and i'm like this is this is interesting and i'm trying to expand my mind and all that and i'm sitting there watching it and they're talking about how like why they keep this whale around that's like killed uh, like three people and they're just like well his sperm's expensive and then boom they just show the trainers at sea world just jerking off this massive killer whale Oh my god! Yeah, they just everything. They're just like all jerking them off, so like they can like get his sperm and everything. And just like it's like whale penis. There was no, there was no warning. There was no nothing. It was just straight, straight there. What did you watch it on? I uh, I think I watched it on Hulu. I have to look. I have to look that up. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I. There's more to it than just the whale penis, but yeah, there's that. There is this. They go over like this trainer who got killed, and like in front of a bunch, like the, the, the killer whale like killed her. No pun intended. In front of a whole group of people at a restaurant that were sitting there watching this show, and Jesus. like tore apart. And like they're all going about like how bad they feel for the trainer and everything. And like I may sound like a jerk, but I didn't feel too much sympathy for her because. <laughs> They were saying that the whale was getting frustrated because, like, she was it wasn't doing the tricks that she wanted it to do, or something. Or yeah, and so like what they do as punishment to get them to stay in line is they don't give them food. Like they oh, like they have like oh. a bucket of like fish for them and all that, and like this thing is already just on edge from living in a bathtub its whole life. So finally, it just has it with her. It just pulls her into the water. <laughs> And I'm just like, what do you think was going to... You're pissing off a whale. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, yeah. They, uh, yeah, I definitely need to watch that documentary because that sounds very interesting. I want to see that. It is. Like, it, it really is. I'm just like, God, this this sucks. 
<laughs> so yeah, I, yeah, I've been watching a lot of bad Netflix movies with uh, these uh, guys on YouTube that do these commentaries. They're called their channel is called Pretty Much It. It's basically them just making fun of the movies the entire time. So actually, so it makes it. It makes these real shitty movies very entertaining to watch. <laughs> that's a, that's a good thing. I, I love movies that are so bad that they're good because like y- you still get something out of them. Oh yeah, and these and these guys are just super funny. <laughs> so I've been doing that to pass the time because they have like a huge library of commentaries. And I'm just like, so I just, if I find a film, I just go get go get the movie and then watch the commentary with it, and it's entertaining as hell. <laughs> have you ever seen? Um... What's it called? Uh, Mystery Science Th- Theater Three Thousand. Uh, no, I have not. They're like the original like B movie critics of making fun of movies that's so bad it's good. I think they're on Comedy Central for a while. I think now they're on the internet, and they've been on since like we were like little kids. Yeah, so it so says since like nineteen eighty eight. Yeah, they've been on forever. That it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, these these guys. That I've been watching. They even went, they even like went on tour to do a, uh, commentaries on thirteen on the thirteen reasons why season three. They actually had shows for every episode. They would go to New City and do a new episode where people would just come and watch them do commentaries on it. <laughs> that that's thirteen reasons why is a perfect example of why you shouldn't like just because the movie's popular, you shouldn't make it into a TV show. Well, it's like. The thing about 13 Reasons Why, that first season, uh, it was pretty, I, I give them credit, it was pretty good for what it, for what it was, I got what, because it seemed like they had a clear message of what they were trying to do there. Yeah. Then the second season happened, and I was just like, <laughs> okay, it's, this is, it, it dealt with a court case of, for Bryce, who was being accused of rape, for, for Hannah, who killed herself in the first season. See, that's just what every Netflix show is now. Yeah, it it, it, was, it was just the most ridiculous court case I've ever seen. Like the st- the stuff that was happening, I was just like, this would never happen in in a, in, in the trial. The lawyers just throwing accusations at these high school kids. I was like, you can't do this. This this is stupid. You gotta like, I mean, you we, you could always bend the truth or whatever, but you have to like have a little. You gotta be a little bit grounded in reality for some of these things, especially it's something like, like that. Yeah, no, this lawyer would just make up scenarios and be like, you did this, didn't you? You did this, you did it. You can't just do, you can't just say that. You can't just make stories up about, you, you did this though, right? Yeah, it's like some of the Law and Order episodes. I'm just like, come on, guys. Like, Yeah, I mean, there's, the, the way we're doing quality of the lives, because I've I've seen the entire show, um, the only way we're deeming quality is of like, season two and three is the performances themselves are very good especially for especially they have really good scenes but the problem is especially in season three there's there's scenes where they tackle these serious issues and they do it so well but then it's so totally off compared to the rest of the show because 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 the rest you'll have one moment where a guy's talking about how he Try how, how he overcame trying to like thinking about killing himself and why he decided not to. It's a very good touching scene. But then, like in the previous episode, it was just this whole episode about these about this girl who just keeps sleeping with this guy the entire show, and it's just stupid music and it's just all over the place. <laughs> nice, nice. So, so, so the show, so the, the show, especially the third season, is just crazy. But with these, with, with Watching the pretty much it commentaries, it's hilarious. Yeah, like they love the show because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, there was another Netflix show that uh, one of my old roommates was watching it. I'm trying to remember what it's called. It's kind of like it's a high school teen drama, and it was like I think one of them is dead and sending letters to everybody, and it's like, um, I'm trying to remember what it was called. Wait, that that. I believe that is that, that sounds like thirteen reasons why. Wait, wait. That, oh, that is thirteen reasons why. Yeah, yeah, the girl that kills. Yeah, the girl oh that kills herself. Oh my god! Oh, I just okay. So, 
<laughs> oh god we and we got this on tape isn't this great 13 yeah. reasons why i got it confused with 10 things i hate about you oh god no okay. yeah because do you remember that 10 <laughs> things i hate about you was a movie yeah. and then, yeah, they the made movie. It, then they made it into a show that was pretty shitty yeah and then yeah, like yeah. now i remember i'm just like i'm sorry like all of these teen high school dramas all just they <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, like I said, the first season of 13 Reasons Why it not was bad. good. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty I, good. But then once they made once they made the second season, it it, it one it tries to tackle every problematic subject matter for teenagers you could ever imagine. And it, it rather than just trying to stick to one like it did in the first season. And mm-hmm. that's why it just it gets very convoluted and kind of ridiculous, but like I said, it's got some good performances, so that makes it at least somewhat interesting to watch. <laughs> yeah, now that's the show where the the kid gets like pretty much uh, he gets a broomstick up his ass, isn't that? Yep, that's that's the one. <laughs> and that's they were, they were, they talked about how controversial that scene was and blah blah blah, and. It was pretty brutal, but I mean, it's nothing. It's not anything worse than we've seen on any other show. So, I I think people need to relax a little bit. Yeah, it it it, it hooked me for the first season, but uh, I I didn't finish it after that. Especially then when I heard that like the whole kid that like gets his gets a broomstick shoved up his ass. I was like, I don't think that's a show that I really want to watch. No, I watched the second season with with a uh, Matt <laughs> and because uh, because because we actually because we did really like the first season and then the second season he wanted to watch it so we like binge watch it in like a day <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and, and then what and I started watching the third season knowing it, it looked ridiculous as nah. it was but I decided I watched like the first couple episodes and I just, I could I couldn't even make it through it watching it by itself. I was just like the char- some of the characters were just nauseating to listen to all the time. Yeah, it's just it's my problem with a lot of the the Netflix shows is that I just I don't think they're all that great. No, they're not. And that's been my biggest criticism especially with uh Netflix original films and stuff like that. Cuz people they they get they put out a billion of these movies and they're, most of them are just complete garbage. Yeah, like Tall and, Girl. Have you seen Tall Girl? Yeah, I actually I worked with a uh, actress that she talked. I first heard about Tall Girl because she was uh, trying to audition. She auditioned for that. So uh, that's when I first tall? heard about that movie. Yeah, she was, was. she tall? <laughs> okay, yeah. So she she was. So it made sense. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that but, shows this. I, I'm just who would bully her. Yeah, she acts. She, she and she acts like she's so tall. What is she like six one or something? Yeah, I know. There's lots of girls who are like six one. That's yeah. That's not anything unheard of, or anything you would get bullied about. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I I I don't get it. Yeah, and all and all these ne- these young it's like young adult freaking Netflix movies they they all feel exactly the same. They are the same cinematography, the same house, the same neighborhood, same kind of characters. Yeah, like, you either got you either got these young adult films that come from that freaking studio awesomeness films or something <laughs> that I've always seen. That's literally, yeah, that's literally the fucking name is awesomeness. I'm like, oh, oh my Jesus. God. Uh, and then you got the, some other ones that just feel like a Hallmark with a little bit more of a budget. <laughs> yeah, and there's a reason Hallmark movies are only watched by boomers. Uh, yeah, like, like, yeah, like my mom. That's something else. Yeah, I, I don't get the appeal. They're the same thing every movie. Yeah, especially all the holiday ones. It just gets really old really fast. Yeah, it's just always some, it's some white couple in like a midwestern state who come home for the holidays and they fall in love. 
Yeah, basically when I come when I come home from my winter break, I I basically just make does that things. happen to you? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's like I'm, it's like I'm I don't come home hating Christmas, and then it's, I don't I don't meet a white man that makes me change my mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Christmas but, uh, to me is like that's like one of my most unfavorite times of the year because of how much of this everybody's an asshole. <laughs> So like as far as holidays go, I mean, Christmas is probably my personal favorite holiday. But I'm not like, I, I don't love. It's like I'm not like super into holidays. <laughs> yeah, like I love Thanksgiving because I'm a fat slob, and I love uh, Halloween because I just love like that kind of. I'm a basic white chick. I like uh, I like the fall and I like. Um, pumpkins like the whole atmosphere of halloween i i love it but yeah so i got i was i, I really liked my last halloween thanksgiving for well all my actually all my holidays from this past year were pretty good because me and my friends down in LA just had a party for halloween thanksgiving and christmas and we all just got super drunk <laughs> pretty much um, i mean that that's the way this is a way to to really celebrate. That's what we did here. We had over here in San Francisco. We just had a Halloween party and then a Friendsgiving and, and shit. Yeah, so. our, yeah. Our our Halloween. I don't remember a ton of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I yeah. It was it was pretty crazy. Yeah, I had to be the party host, so like I I I remember too much. I'm like shit. But yeah, my butt. Yeah, my buddy has this uh, apartment complex, and they have like this clubhouse that we're able to like host. He's able to host parties in, so we've done that several times now, and it's it's always a lot of fun. Oh, that's <laughs> we awesome. End up, yeah, then we end up we usually end up going out by the pool and smoking because we're smoking because we're drunk at that point. I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, so. I can't. I don't, like I said, I know what it is. It's just crave this. You start craving cigarettes when you're drunk. <laughs> Yeah, I you really do. That's like my favorite time is just be like to that point where you're cross faded, to the point yeah. where you're just like you, you can. You can still function, but you're still yeah, like hot. Yeah, it's still high as fuck. So, but you like you have a good time. Yeah, so. yeah. I haven't I haven't really been into smoking like weed much anymore just because I don't know. I don't getting high doesn't always feel awesome to me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a rare occasion for me too. I don't, I don't really smoke that much. I usually smoke when I like I drink heavily, and that's pretty rare. It's like it's usually when we like go out bar hopping or something, but we don't go out bar hopping very much. Yeah, so I like if I smoke when I drink, it's usually just cigarettes. I don't, I don't even smoke weed just because I, I I don't know. I like the feeling of being drunk more than being high. <laughs> Yeah, like it hides. It, like it hides. I don't know. I used to enjoy it, but that's kind of I don't know. I've kind of grown out of it for some reason. I remember when we took that edible at when we went to go see the the movie. Oh, with with a uh, uh, what's his name? Al, um, Eddie the Eagle. Eddie, yeah, Eddie the Eagle. Yeah, and then we went back to your sister. We went back to your house, and like your sister was like, "What's wrong with you guys?" We just like laughed at everything she said. Yeah, and yeah, and Albert didn't realize how high we were the entire time, so we're just laughing our ass off yeah. the entire movie for no reason. And then we just immediately went to Jack in the Box. <sighs> yeah. Oh, good times when you know, when we were able to leave our homes. Yeah, I I took that for granted. Oh, in case anybody's wondering, we are in California where weed is legal, so don't. Uh, if anybody's listening <laughs> from a, another state, we're we're not criminals here i mean it's like did we do it before it was legal probably yeah yeah so i mean so did so did everybody else yeah everybody did i mean nobody did not so anybody who didn't who says that they didn't is liars (laughs) have you uh (laughs) have you seen the show westworld i haven't i i know that that's that's a based off of michael crichton book isn't it yeah, I believe so. It was, yeah, the guy yeah, wrote I know, Jurassic I know it was Park. Based on, it, yeah, I know it was based on a book, and then it was uh, a movie in like the late 70s, I believe. Yeah. 
So is it good, the show? Uh, the first season is very good, in my opinion. Um, I, I, when I started the show, I did hear that the second season is what kind of lost some people. Um, mm-hmm. I agree because it it goes in a it goes in a whole different kind of direction. Do you know like the concept of the show at all? Yeah, it's 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 pretty much Jurassic Park with like robot humans, isn't it? Essentially, yeah. Yeah, I remember that's what like the movie. I I saw the some of the movie when I was really little, and like, yeah, it was just it's like a theme park that just goes awry. Yeah, and like, but like the whole point of the show is like, yeah, the, the hosts are the robot humans. They basically, they, they basically start to become more human, and they eventually try to take. They eventually try to like get at, like take them apart because they're starting to have like memories of of stuff that the humans have done to them and all that. Then in the second season, it just turns it just turns all the hosts into these freaking terminators. That would just go. That all they want to do is kill all the humans, and it's like, well, now all these characters that they had in the first season are all of a sudden in very one note and uninteresting. Especially one of the main characters, her name is Dolores. She was like the she was like kind of like this farm girl kind of character, like she, very a very layered character, very interesting character in the first season, and now they've they basically pro reprogrammed her as a, her uh, personality. So now she's yeah. All she wants to do is kill everybody now. And it's like, well, now this show's boring as hell. <laughs> Isn't that? I, I that's the problem. I think some shows like really they stumble after a very good first season. It takes a really good writer to keep it going. Oh yeah, well, yeah. For the first episode of the show is one of the, is it's honestly one of the best pilots I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's it it was such a intriguing setup to the entire show and the rest of the and, and the rest of the season was really good as well but yeah the second season i've kind of lost interest yeah <laughs> the, all the, the, all the yeah, go ahead uh, the guy who's playing uh he was in james bond he's playing commissioner gordon in the new uh batman movies in it what's his name the the black guy with the oh jeffrey Wright. kind of jeffrey Wright. yeah he's a really good actor Oh yeah, yeah, he's re- he's really good in Westworld and Yeah, I've yeah, I've liked him ever since I saw it. it's ever since he was in Casino Royale back in the day and I've watched some other stuff that he's been in. Yeah. Uh, but he's always very good. How do you feel about him as uh, Commissioner Gordon? It's a, it's an interesting choice. Uh I don't doubt that Jeffrey Wright will do a good job, so I'm not skeptical about it. Yeah. It's just it just depend. I guess it's, it's really up to, just whatever you are looking for out of the character. I guess, but in terms of whether he can play the part, I don't doubt that he can. Yeah, like there is a like somebody did a Photoshop picture where like they they put a wig on him and just gave him a mustache with like the glasses and like he he looks like Commissioner Gordon. I'm just like I'm I'm down for this. Um, yeah. And, go ahead. I I I say yeah, like and he plays kind of almost a similar character like that in Westworld, like like where he's got the gla- he's got the whole glasses thing going. So like I could buy it easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm really uh, I'm I'm looking forward to see what he's gonna do with the role. There is a uh, there's another podcast I listened to and they were talking about it and uh, they were saying how uh. Because in the comics, Gordon, like, uh, he has a really hard time in the police department because, like, Gotham's mm-hmm. just so corrupt. And uh, he has a really hard time, like, rising through the ranks or, like, you know, just being on the force. And uh, uh, somebody suggested that, like, since uh, Jeffrey Wright is, like, is, is black, that, like, it would be a, maybe a cool component to make it, like, uh, that Gotham City PD's, like, almost like LAPD in the 90s, just, like, hella bad. Yeah. And just, like, really corrupt, like, police brutality and everything, like, really racist and all that, and, like, maybe see that, like, how that would affect Jeffrey Wright as Gordon when he gets transferred into the to the GCPD. Yeah, that'd be a really interesting... Yeah. If they do it right... To go. If they do it right, that'd be, that could be a really good story. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
Yeah. And Holt is like, I was hoping to get to see Jeffrey Wright in No Time to Die in two weeks, but obviously that's not happening. Oh, uh, yeah. Every, all the movies are. Do you think movie theaters are going to make it through this? Oh, uh, there's, there's a topic for discussion. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think they will because one, especially if they if they can stay afloat financially, yes. Because as soon as people are able to go again, I think people are gonna want, they're going to want to go, especially after all this. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of them staying afloat financially <laughs> and not yeah. going under. But in terms of in terms of, because I know. I'll, there's the whole topic of how they're putting all these films that are in theaters on streaming services. And now people are st- saying that, that that might be the fu- that might be the future. And that might just be how we should start releasing all movies. And I'm not quite ready to hop on that train yet. <laughs> yeah. I don't, th- I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's going to be the case, but again, it's all a matter of keep them staying in business. And I think as long as they're able to do that, Yes, I think people. I think movie theaters will be fine, with with audiences still wanting to go. Yeah, I uh, like it's it's just that they like they really gotta re rework their business model because like I think they only make like five percent off of ticket sales and the rest goes to like uh the rest of the revenue goes to like the movie studios. So like the only thing that they make money on is, is concessions and. You know, people, I'm not going to name names, people sneak their own food into the movie theaters because, like, it's so, ex- the concessions are so expensive. Yeah. I, 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 they're lucky so many people, so many people are, are still, so many people are still willing to pay, pay for, for all the food, even yeah. at those prices, but I've never been one of them. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, you know, um, they can't survive off of this model that's only just like um that's all that's just it just doesn't seem viable especially since our generation feels like they're moving more and more towards streaming like and and you have like what was it like 15 bucks a ticket now at some places yeah and the whole subscription based service that like AMC has done, I think is the right way to go. I'm just one. Yeah. I just think more theaters need to possibly look into doing that as well. Cause I think that is getting a lot of people that is getting a lot of people to go back to the theaters, not having to pay for $20 per movie. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I honestly think that all the big movie theater companies like AMC Regal and uh, whatever other ones there are should just, I mean, Excuse me. If they just kind of took a stand and like told the um, and told the movie studios, it's just like, hey, you know, we're gonna we're not gonna show your movie unless you unless you uh, you know, we rework this this deal with the tickets or whatever. Then you know, I'm sure that like, because Disney takes a ridiculous amount from the box office at movie theaters. Yeah. But then again, look at look how big these studios are compared to like just, you know, AMC. Well, yeah, and whenever this topic comes up for discussion, the studios are always the first to say how they want theater chains to survive, and they don't. They're not for streaming services, especially. You've heard many directors speak out on this, especially people like Spielberg. Yeah, it's Scorsese. Who, yeah, Spielberg. Spielberg was one of the first to say that. No, like Netflix movies should not be put in the theaters. Okay, I'm that like, well, he, that's definitely true. <laughs> okay, I agree with that, but there's sh- the the Academy should still recognize the work that goes into Netflix movies. Oh, oh, I I agree with that, especially when you mm. get the Marriage Stories and the Irishman. Even though yeah. I don't love the Irishman, uh, I still I, gotta see it, that. It it's not a, it's not bad or anything. It's Scor- I don't know. Scorsese is hit or miss for me. Like what, once, once you kind of get his his whole shtick of what he does, you you either love it or you don't. And I'm I'm kind of, I'm just kind of meh mm-hmm. on 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 his films. But and The Irishman just wasn't one of the ones that really interests me. 
it got a lot of attention because of the whole de-aging and all that but yeah it, it was a, it was fine and it, it, it was very long though and it, it, for for me i pers- I, it, I felt how long it was where I, not everybody felt that way though yeah now i love scorsese movies like he's he's one of the he's one of my favorites like goodfellas and the departed oh, yeah. the departed is really good too like goodfellas to me is like it for me i still got to see taxi driver and raging bull though i haven't seen those two well yeah um, like ta- like like like, from, like i like taxi driver i like uh shutter island's really good and i forgot he did that movie yeah um what else has he done i I thought that I, I I think that the part is okay. Obviously, Goodfellas. I re, I I yeah. just rewatched that like not too long ago, and I forgot how great it is. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he I think he did the Aviator as well. Yeah, pretty much anything with Leonardo DiCaprio. I, 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 I uh, yeah, go ahead. No, go go. go what were you saying? I was saying I also also I've been meaning to watch that one film he did that was on. I, I've been seeing it on Hulu. I think it was called Silence. It's got Adam Driver, Andrew Garfield, hmm. and Liam Neeson. Wow, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it came out in like 2016, I believe. But I've heard I've heard it's really good. I just ha- I haven't got around to watching it yet. Oh, cool! Well, I'll have to like, check that out. It says it's like a 17th century missionary type film, but yeah, hmm. that's another one I've been to watch. Yeah, I uh, I just saw Inception the other day. For the first time. For the first time, I finally saw sat down and watched Inception. My girl made me watch it. That's funny because I I've actually been really wanting to rewatch Inception because I haven't watched it all the way through since I believe it. I can't rem- I can't remember if it was my junior or senior year of high school. <laughs> it's so yeah. good. It. Yeah, I know. I remember, I remember loving it. As but I want to rewatch it so I can actually remember all the plot points and actually talk about it. Yeah, it it, it is one of those movies. It seems like you gotta watch a couple times to kind of get the whole thing. Yeah, so I I I own it. So it's just a matter of me sitting yeah. down and watching it. <laughs> I oh, I think that he was in a dream the whole that he never woke up. He was always in a dream. Oh yeah, well yeah, with the whole ending on how the thing keeps spinning. Yeah, I think that he was in a dream since like the beginning. Like the entire yeah. movie takes yeah. place in a dream. Uh, I need to rewatch it so I can so I can have this debate. <laughs> yeah, I'm tin foil hatting right now. <laughs> how was uh How was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? That's another one I've been meaning to watch. Um. For me personally, I love it, um, and I'm not the biggest uh, Tarantino fan. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, like as far as Tarantino goes, like I like Re- I like Inglorious Bastards. I like Reservoir Dogs. Uh, that's a, that's about as far as my fandom goes. Yeah. With, with him and I, I, I did watch Diego and Chain for the first time a couple months, a couple months back, and that was pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, I like that he he keeps westerns alive. I I think that there's a severe lack of westerns in in the in movies nowadays. Yeah, uh, the biggest, the only complaint I get from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, what which for me doesn't bother me. It's de- it, it's a slower one. But mm-hmm. for someone like me who just really, for one, just the seeing classic Hollywood back in the film is really fun. Yeah. And the uh, dynamic between Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt is so great. So for me, I just like, for me who likes seeing great actors put on great performances and I get a lot of pleasure from that. That's that in itself was, was super entertaining, super entertaining for me. And also, I just think the movie's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> the only part I've ever seen from the movie is uh, the part where uh, Brad Pitt goes to his trailer and makes mac and cheese. <laughs> I, 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 something about that scene, I enjoy it. <laughs> it's so good. It's just like everything you need to know about him, well, like with barely any dialogue. It's just a guy making mac and cheese with his dog. 
Yeah, and he, he's like, he eats it straight out of the pot. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, scenes like that I think are really lacking in movies, and I don't think people realize how much just quiet scenes that with no dialogue to just kind of, how how well they can really help you get to know a character. Oh yeah, um, that's what that's where the whole thing what we talk about with script writing is uh, character development through action, not dialogue. Yeah, yeah. There is a, yeah. That that's a, my big criticism with like the Marvel movies is that there's not nearly enough of that because, and it's disappointing because when they do do it, it's they do it really well. Like in a like a Winter Soldier, just that scene where Steve Rogers goes to his apartment and just puts on his record player and just sits there. That's a great scene. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it it really helps you get to know the character, and I. I wish that like more scenes like that were just in movies where they don't have to explain everything. Yeah, I mean, as much like I don't, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. Like as much as much as I like, I like, I really love like Avengers: Infinity War, and I enjoyed Endgame and all that. I they, I, I at times I wish there was just a little bit more depth. To to them at times, yeah. but I I I I don't know. <laughs> the way I look at them is that they're comic book movies, and they're they're yeah. they're like comic books, and they're deep when they need to be. And like they, I obviously we all love the characters. That's why we keep going back. So I mean, they're doing they're doing stuff right, but they're well, yeah, they, yeah, they're, they're B movie. They're big budget B movies, is what they are. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, I think we should applaud them when they go beyond that, and you know, when they go, when they go to see movie level, which they've done a, a few times, we should, you know, obviously call them out on that. But you know, I, I think people, some people go in with too high expectations. And yeah, and, and I was very, I, I was really impressed by Endgame. I, I personally, re- like, I still watch it, and I still really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I know. The po- the popular consensus, it, it kind of, it, it's kind of suffered from what The Force Awakens with Star Wars suffered with, where people walked out raving about it, and then as time went on, it became the popular thing to dislike Endgame. <laughs> yeah, I don't get, like, I don't get the, Endgame, like, I, I liked Infinity War better, that's just because I think Infinity War is the only comic book movie ever made that ever felt like I was watching a comic book. Yeah, I, I would say Infinity War is overall stronger for me, and Endgame. Endgame delivers on. Endgame is a pretty good movie and it, that has very satisfying moments. Mm-hmm. So, but overall, I would say I like Infinity War a little bit better, but Endgame is still very good for me. Yeah. You know, it's uh. Yeah, we there obviously there are like uh there are certain characters that you could always go a little bit deeper with, I think like you know, I think they could have done this with the Hulk and uh Edward Norton, I think he came out and with in a recent interview and he was saying how his plan was to do a Dark Knight style Hulk sequel. Yeah. And Marvel didn't or Disney really didn't want to do that or whatever, so they just never made another Hulk movie and even with Mark Ruffalo, I think that they still could have done a, a really good movie like that that goes into the whole psyche of the Hulk. DC's still struggling right now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. They're really ho- it's like they're really hoping this new Batman will work out for them. Yeah, I haven't seen Birds of Prey yet. Um I'm, I'm I still got to do my Suicide Squad review. I have the draft written up. I just got to finish it and, and film it. But, uh, um, yeah, Birds of Prey, like, I, I've heard mixed things about it. And everybody's making it political and everything. I'm just like, is it a good movie or not? Exactly. Like, yeah. There's this, there's this thing now where it seems just like um, it – there's just some guys I feel like that just get angry anytime a woman does anything in a movie. Oh, and yeah, I mean, yeah. like when say in Endgame when uh, when Captain Marvel kind of did her thing at the end where she she played she played she played a role 
and I thought her role was pretty well done. They didn't make her overpowered or anything. But one of my friends was still pretty upset about what they had to do, thinking she was so, so overpowered. I'm like, she didn't really do that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hated that. Uh, I couldn't stand her in the beginning. Like, I, I think that she's a a terrible character. Like, because, like, this her attitude in the beginning of the movie I thought was terrible. But, like, towards in the third act when she came back, I was like, okay, she's not that bad. Uh, you know, when, when she's at, yeah, when she's actually, like, fighting and everything, like, she seems fine. But I don't know. The, the whole narcissistic attitude that Brie Larson goes off. Why it just for Brie Larson it rubs me the wrong way with her. <laughs> oh, I know. It's same for me. It's like I think that's just a common thing in movies nowadays. It's just like do you guys not know how to write strong women characters without making them assholes? Like Yeah, just just, just like with like with her she's like she's always like got that straight face and like, "Well, I'm going to go do you guys' job because I can do it better than you." Blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, yeah, it's like screw you. I'm like, can she be? She, the problem is, she, they don't make her likable at any point. <laughs> no, they don't. Like that's I, I really, uh, you know, to me, the gold standard will always be like Princess Leia, Sarah Connor, and Ripley. Yeah, like that. Th- that's it. And I'm just like, not once did they ever have to mention that you know they're a woman or like you know that that's or that. You know, they didn't, they didn't treat anybody else like, they didn't treat men like shit just to, just to prove a point. And I think that's just writers nowadays. Yeah. And as far as I know, I mean, like Black Widow, they they never treated her that way. They never really put female empowerment much with her. She was just kind of who she was and it works. (laughs) Yeah. That's why I love Black Widow and Scarlet Witch. Like, I think they're two great characters and, and the, God, I always forget her character's name. The one in Black Panther, his guard or whatever, the bald lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she was always really cool too. But yeah, it's this. <laughs> Did you see with the the Charlie Angels movie? They uh, <laughs> the the director. Oh what's who's who's the director again? Um. Oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Uh, let me see. What was her last name? I want to say Elizabeth Banks. Yes, yes, Elizabeth Banks. Okay, yeah, like, she said something like, uh, the reason, like, I don't know if this is 100% true, or this is just, like, internet trolls, but, like, they they keep saying that, like, she said, like, this isn't a movie for men, and then the movie tanked, and then, yeah. and then like, I, I saw this meme, it was just, like, it says, like, Elizabeth Banks says, movie is not for men. Men don't see it. Movie tanks. And then it says, Elizabeth Banks again. It goes, surprise Pikachu face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, critic-wise, it did worse than the original 2000 film. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's... And everybody was saying, it's like, I didn't even... I didn't even know that they were making a new Charlie's Angels movie. No, I mean... Yeah, the original 2000 has a ranking of 5 out of 10. The new one has a 4. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, those early 2000s action movies, too, they're, they're not that good. No. Uh, yeah, 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 here it is. Charlie Angel, Charlie's Angels director blames men for box office failure. <laughs> <laughs> they tried saying that about Birds of Prey, too, and I'm just like... I, I got to see it first before I before I, I put judgment on it because like I I like Margaret Robbie and I think that she was a great Harley Quinn and I I I, I was kind of n- a little bit irked going going into this movie well I mean I haven't seen it yet but like just seeing how what they did with Cassandra Kane because in the comics she's like this mute and she's like this ninja badass she becomes like a bat one of the Batwoman characters and she's just a really awesome character in the comics and then in the movie they just make her this street kid that's just like i'm like what i don't know it just seems stupid to go with that choice yeah I, I, yeah and i'm just reading about the stuff she was this quote she was saying and nothing she says makes any sense is it true that she said that <laughs> it, it talks about like bank, it's like banks blames the lack of success on the preferences of male viewers, contrasting box office performances of Charlie's Angels with the success of girl power superhero movies like Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel. 
men will go and see a comic book movie with Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel because that's a male genre. <laughs> I don't think that's a male genre. That's a genre that appeals to everybody. That's why Disney yeah. makes so much money off of it. It's like one Charlie's An- and Charlie's Angels is not a popular franchise. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I don't think that anybody like I only know who I know who Charlie's Angels are. But you think Gen Z knows who Charlie's Angels are? No, no. Yeah, because I I know from I think we all know that it was a TV show that like our parents would watch. And then, and then we have the movie that came out in two thousand that wasn't that good. So, yeah, yeah. You know, she says she has no qualms. She has no qualms with the success of Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel, but we need more women's voices supported with money because that's the power. The power is in the money. I don't even. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. I don't <laughs> know either. I, I, we're just men. What do we know? We're stupid. Yeah, yeah it's like, like, <laughs> like, like, like the whole the the truth of the truth of the matter is, it, it just because I did I because I did watch it. It's not good. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's it's at the very least a very cliche for cliche movie. It's nothing new. And like I said, Charlie's Angels is just nothing people are dying to see. <laughs> yeah, it's like making a Starsky and Hutch movie or a uh, or a Dukes of Hazard movie right now. It's yeah. just like, who's gonna go see that? I mean, other than like, I mean, even the movie that they did that was banking on boomer nostalgia wasn't that great. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sorry, but Kirsten... anytime I see Kirsten Stewart in a movie, I'm already kind of turned off by it. Kristen Stewart, I think that she does good in small movies. She she does. It's whenever I see her in the big blockbusters, that's what that's when I get worried. Like she was she it's like she was in that she was in that one that, that one film. The one where she was like a maid or something. Yeah. In the Victorian area, yeah. yeah. She she's had some good performances in movies that weren't necessarily good. But she was good in them. Yeah. But but what, yeah, whenever I see her in like these kind of more blockbuster movies, I'm just kind of like a. <laughs> yeah, she drops the ball like hella hard. Yeah. Right. There's like th- this review from the Guardian that calls Charlie's Angels a pointless, unfunny bread, d- bread brain deading dud. <laughs> oh my god, that's brutal. <laughs> yeah. <so, laughs> Yeah, Jesus. So it lacks it lacks style and laughs. God, I'm like, yeah, that about covers it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Black Widow though. I am. That that I, looks really good, especially that the, the end of the trailer where it's like her walking down that hallway. That animation looks so cool. Oh yeah, and I'm I'm excited to see Florence Pugh in it. Which one is Florence Q? Uh Florence Pugh. She plays Florence the sister. Pugh. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, have you seen like uh, Fighting with My Family? Uh, uh-uh, I'm not up to date on actors' names. <laughs> well, fight. Well, fight. Fighting with My Family is a v- very good movie. It's a wrestling um, movie, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's, a, it's a surprisingly good movie. It's a it's like a, it's a very easy watch of movie. It's got a, it's got a touching story. And it's entertaining. Okay. Um, yeah, Florence Pugh was also really. She was also. In Little Women, which I fucking love that movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been thinking about seeing Little Women because, like, I mean, how many we've had? That's just a, a story that keeps getting remade over and over and over again. And the fact that this one has gotten that much praise, I, I, I oh, been yeah. thinking about checking it out because I've read the story. I mean, I'm an English major, so I've been forced to read that story so many times. Yeah, I, and I went and checked out like previous previous versions of the movie. This one's. Obviously, easily, without a doubt, yeah. the best. <laughs> I've seen the original black and white one, and I remember liking that one. But uh. yeah, I saw yeah I saw the black and white one like years like years ago. But I I went back and watched the one with Christian Bale and all that. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. Uh, yeah, I want to see um, I want to see a good Moby Dick movie. That would be interesting. Yeah, because like that's a story that I've always loved, and it's just it's from that era of like like Little Women and all that that I just like that it's like that kind of literature that like I think would make a really good movie nowadays. But obviously the 
the one that like the gold standard. I think the reason why why that movie doesn't get attempted more is because like they kind of peaked with like the 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 Gregory Peck movie from like I think it was made in the sixties. Right. Yeah. So it's just when when you have that like gold standard, it's just like why would you remake it again when you it, it, when you made like the perfect movie? Yeah. When when Little Women first came out, like I wasn't even like really planning on seeing it. Um, but my family kind of got me to go see it. And then I was just like, oh, yeah. I was like, I've heard some good things about it. So I went to go see it out of curiosity. And I, I ended up loving it even more than even more than everyone else. I was like, I was just like, that was so fucking good. <laughs> for, for, so, so for one, like I said, the performances are just top, freaking top notch. Yeah. Right? By literally everybody in the, in the movie. And the, uh, the score it was amazing. I think it was nominated for one of the best original scores. Mm-hmm. And I th- didn't Joker end up winning best original score? I think so, but that was really good. It was Th- that score with with that cello that they use. That such a good score. <laughs> yeah, I was very bitter about it winning, but I, I have to admit it was it's it's very good. <laughs> the only- yeah, the only thing I did like I didn't I didn't understand Joker yeah. like getting nominated for like best editing and all that kind of stuff. That was uh, anyway. I thought it was I fairly basic. Ba- it's like no, go ahead. No, I thought it was fairly basic as far as like editing, but like the uh, the cinematography and everything I thought was amazing in that movie. But yeah, cinematography is good. The thing with the thing with editing the editing category is honestly all they kind of do with the editing is whatever is nominated for best picture, they kind of lump it in there with best editing without really giving much thought. Yeah. And, and cause there are so many movies that actually have like super interesting editing. Like I just watched the, like uh guy, Rich, yeah, guy Richie's gentleman, the gentleman mm-hmm. the other day, like a movie like that calls a lot of attention to the editing. Something like that should be nominated for best editing. Yeah. I feel like movies that are like, that should be like that should be a category that's dominated by action movies where there actually is a lot of editing and not like a character study movie. Yeah, like or like with something like Little Women, because the whole film is told non chronologically, it goes it's it goes back and forth between time periods. Mm-hmm. And something like like a drama like that could get nominated for best editing because it's done very, it's done very well and done very creatively so that makes sense but then but like a film like like the Joker like Joker editing wise is pretty basic um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as far as editing it was I mean it was done well but there was nothing sp- all that special about it mm-hmm. but yeah, but anyway, that's just my little gripe on that. <laughs> yeah, nah, I think uh, I think that there's a lot of I think that action movies that have a really good editing style that kind of sets it apart from the normal cliched stuff is the stuff that we should be really focusing on because I think action movies today overall they kind of suck. Oh, for the most part, I mean, Mission Impossible Fallout was pretty much the last. It was one of the ones. It's one of the greatest action movies we've probably had. Period. Yeah. But also, it was kind of the first great one we've had in a long time. Yeah, I'm not into the whole born identity shaky cam thing. No, I. So I have all the born films. I haven't watched them in years. I've been considering giving them a watch just to see how see because I don't, I really don't remember much about the story or anything. So I I kind of want to watch them, but. Yeah. I do like, I'm, I do like the style Mission Impossible versus the whole shaky Kim Born mm-hmm. Identity because for when Born Identity did it, it was well done, but it's become a very overused concept. <laughs> yeah, I thought that um, Skyfall and Spectre had really good action. You know, like the James Bond movies. Um, a lot of the MCU movies have really good action too. Um, you know, like this, like the fight on, like the fight on the train with Inspector is like a great example of just really well shot action. Oh yeah, it's ha- it's got yeah, it's got no score. It's it's all about 
brute force and brutality, which is the kind of that's that's what I like. Yeah, I'm so and, happy the Russo brothers dropped that that shaky cam style for Infinity War because they had that in a uh, in in Winter Soldier and Civil War, and I was just so happy that they dropped that for the the two Avengers movies. Yeah, and I, the style like the style for No Time to Die that Kerry Fukunaga has developed it looks the the film wise it looks so different. Mm-hmm. Which is what I like. Which was that's what I like about a lot of the Bond films is very rarely do they ever look the same. Yeah. It's... I mean, I mean, I mean, like obviously when you when you like all like a lot when you go from actor to actor, like they tend to look similar. Like Sean Connery's got his style, then Roger Moore's got his, and then Pierce Brosnan's got his style. Like they like each actor's they all look the same. But then Daniel Craig Daniel Craig's has been the most diverse. Yeah. In terms of style, uh, yeah, like like Casino Royale, they got Casino Royale, then Quantum of Solace. The whole they Quantum of Solace kind of took on the whole born identity editing style, which for me it was it 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 was different and a nice change of pace. So I liked it for what it was. But then but then you got Skyfall, you get Roger Deakin doing cinematography, so it's yeah. got a completely different look from anything we've ever seen. It's... And Inspector. God has his own look, so yeah. Is Sam Mendes directing uh, No Time to Die? Is it the no, same no, no. team? No, it's uh, Kerry Fukunaga. Oh, okay. Uh, he um, he's most known for doing the first season of True Detective. Okay. Yeah. But so is this confirmed to be but, Daniel Craig's last you, film? Yes, it is. As as okay. uh, of course. Of course, the second this film gets delayed, rumors start coming out. It's like, oh, he might be doing more. I'm like, no, he's not. He's literally said a thousand times yeah. that this is his last one. And the film is this film is written to conclude his story. That's the that's why they did it. Nah, this film it'll be interesting. Is, yeah, this because because yeah because his films obviously have a story arc that previous Bond films didn't have. So they wrote this film. Yeah. That will be. Uh, they wrote it as an ending for his story, which is why I'm super freaking excited for it, and I can't believe I have to wait till November. <laughs> is it true that like all the previous Bond movies don't are are they all self-contained and don't have any continuity except for the Craig movies? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Um, they have some loose. They have some plots that cross over very loosely, but not really. <laughs> Hmm. I'm pretty much pretty much every film is is a one they're basically one off action films which some Bond fans really like that and it does work so I don't have a problem with it but then some people get upset by the continuity of the Daniel Craig movies which I don't understand why that's a problem for me it's a new take on the film and it's what personally makes me even more emotionally invested in the story, which I like, especially when you have someone like Daniel Craig's Bond, who's very a very deep character, a lot deeper than we've had in the past where, with Connery and Brosnan and all of that. So it mm-hmm. makes sense to give him a whole story arc where you kind of get invested in, and then you got you get to establish the relationships like that he has with M and as. Uh, which with Judy Dench is and and Ben Warshaw is Q, Naomi Harris is Money Penny, Ray Fiend is M. Like you get this whole dynamic of these characters that you never had. So, I don't understand the complaints about people not liking the fact that they use continuity for Craig's. I don't know. I feel like it's an older generation, older generation of Bond fans that have that issue. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. That's uh. I don't understand why anybody wouldn't be down for the continuity for those movies because I've always, I don't, I like continuity in my movies because like I love getting into mythology and stuff like that. So, huh, it's interesting. Yeah, like I said, most most Bond fans really like Daniel Craig as as, as Bond, uh, but there are some out there that the way particularly Spectre tried to uh, bring all the films together we're basically saying like uh christoph waltz as blofeld was behind everything and everything that had happened previous and they didn't like how they were trying to basically make everything all connected and i'm like why not whether it was executed the best or not is one thing but the idea within itself i like 
that Spectre is behind all of this, and that's kind of the whole point to the story. That's kind of the whole point of the story is every everything that's been leading up. It's been leading up to the big organization kind of thing. So that's just me. Yeah, I I like that that the whole thing that the, the revelation that uh that Spectre was like pulling the strings the whole time. It's kind of like a when you find out that Shield was like infiltrated by hydra it's like i love those kind of twists i mean that that's classic spy spy movie right there and i think it worked really well well yeah that's very classic of specter when you because that's essentially like what they were they are that organization that kind of sits in the shadows like in films like thunderball from 1965 that was a concept that's been well established they kind of just sit in the shadows and blofeld makes call makes the call sends people out to do things that's just kind of how they work so it makes sense that that's how it would play out in these new movies it felt mm-hmm. it felt very classic bond to me so for me it works i expect sector has its issues but as a film i still can enjoy it for what it is but uh mostly the issues with that film come in the third act but I like that they're continuing the story from Spectre with No Time to Die. And, and if No Time to Die is as good as I think it's going to be, it could even make me enjoy Spectre even more because it'll feel like it'll feel like the beginning of a bigger story kind of thing. So, Yeah. Hopefully that'll end up being the case. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so, too. There's lots of movies that have that have been pushed back that I'm, I'm hoping to see. Like I am interested to see where the, uh, where, uh, the James Bond series goes, especially since I, I mean, I already reviewed all the, the James Bond movies on my channel. So, mm-hmm. well, the, the one film that's kind of held its ground as far as release dates has been tenant. <laughs> tenant. Isn't that a, is that the Christopher Nolan one? Yeah. That's yeah. his, they they're the only ones that are kind of holding their ground as far as I think keeping its their June release date something like that. Yeah, it looks so confusing. It does, but what what Nolan film does it? But it looks fast. I'm fascinated by the concept. Yeah, I'm interested to see what it's gonna be. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we just hit we just hit an hour, and since uh. We're having so many technical difficulties. Uh, you want to wrap it up right now? Uh, yeah, I, I gotta get my, like, I gotta go get a run in and stuff like that, so we can go ahead and wrap it up. All right, we'll try this again maybe next week, and uh, hopefully we'll figure out a, a better way to do this so that way it doesn't get interrupted so much. Um, for the yeah, I can even try to do side, this. Spot anyways, uh, yeah. Yeah, I always used to be jealous of your Wi-Fi at your house because it was so fast. <laughs> it's it, it's fast in some parts of the house. It's 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 picky. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap this up right now. So, uh, Joseph, thanks for uh, thanks for being on here. And uh, if you guys like what you see, go and hit subscribe. You can uh, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can uh, also follow Joseph. Where can we follow you at? Uh, you can follow my YouTube channel, uh, Hoop Studios. Uh, I still, I'm looking to start posting more videos on there now that I got all this free time. Uh, I post basketball, basketball content, movie, tra- my own personal movie trailers, promos, mixes, whatever. Just all my editing work goes on there. And if you're interested. And any of that, uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, so hopefully I'll get some stuff on there for you guys to enjoy. All right. So, guys, uh, thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you later. Bye. All right. Always a pleasure. <laughs>